Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the um, NXT review for the 6th of uh, April 2010. We also are adding a, uh, which is kind of cool, an independent series because honestly I'm getting burnt out on the main level project. So what I am going to do is uh, add a every 4th or 5th video or so. At an independent show, because guys on the independents and ladies on the independents seem to often care more about uh, building their future career in a meaningful way. That's not always the case, but coming from the indies, I prefer it. So what we're going to do is IW, um, yeah, IWTV, Independent Wrestling TV, which is originally, I believe, Smart Mark Video's um, creation. They've got 7,000 hours worth of programming all of the independence which i think i think is good for a number of reasons including but not limited to uh the benefit of the uh independent cycle as it were so i've just randomly started a promo a um a deal there where we're just going to pick one promotion and go through everything that is on the service so iwc uh icw new york uh, which has been around since 2001 or so, is going to be the focus. There's about 40 or 50 shows there in that vein. So you'll see that added over the weeks and months to come, and eventually we'll get through all of those. That doesn't mean that the WWE or the current day content is going away. It also doesn't mean that the old school content is going away. It's just I need a break from uh, watching bad wrestling. And I'd rather watch bad indie wrestling where guys are at least trying than badly booked wrestling where the guys are trying, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, we open with the interviews with uh, Darren Young. He's being challenged because he's been on a losing streak as of late. A-list Otunga says that he, in fact, does not uh, want to be a team member here. He basically wants to be a standout guy. Daniel Bryan, the top guy, basically says he's the best in the world at the time, even though he feels like he has not uh, ultimately gotten to where he wants to be. They do a uh, challenge deal here wherein guys are chasing around a keg. This is the time in NXT where it's just goofy. Um, several guys, actually every guy, kind of has to run with the keg around the ring and come back with it. Um, notable things here, and they literally waste... I don't know, 10 minutes of TV time on this, or internet stream time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Heath Slater eventually wins. The notable thing here is that, in fact, uh, winning gets temporary immunity. Uh, we're about uh, 18 minutes into a 40-some minute show when they go through all this. Uh, Tarver says he doesn't want to do it, uh, and basically uh, Skip Sheffield drops the... Uh, the keg along the way here, which is just goofy looking. Uh, Skip Sheffield, uh, not not Tarver. Um, Skip Sheffield's carrying it over his shoulder and complains. He says things are rigged against him when they come back from commercial. Skip Sheffield, of course, becoming Ryback at a later point. Uh, sponsors by the KFC brand Extreme Rules is the pay-per-view upcoming. Darren Young and Daniel Bryan are in a match here. Uh, Young with his pro. And then, I mean, you see Bryan send Young to the outside of the ring, hits a dive to the, or a uh, baseball slide to the outside, catches a kick along the way there. Running, uh, jumping knee by Bryan into the dasher boards on the outside here. And uh, what I notice is, I mean, this, this first edition... Uh, first season is much better than the following seasons. Uh, at least there's a, a decent number of wrestling content here. Uh, in the follow-up seasons, it was much more storyline, and that's why it's been a harder slog to get through. I'm, I'm through season four, but I'm going to be adding these as we go. Uh, missile drop kick by Daniel Bryan. Cattle mutilation. Submission hold there, which actually uh, Darren Young rolls through and then gets rolled up into a... Um, Pinning combination. Uh, up and over goes Brian. Brian goes for the uh, backslide, tries to get the man 
over and up, but doesn't get him. Goes for the second backslide, gets that a second time, and Daniel Bryan in in reasonable control of the contest here. Kicks by uh, Darren Young. Young doesn't want to quit, but uh, doesn't exactly want to be done with things either. Big uh, uh, backflip off the apron and a sunset flip by Daniel Bryan. Bryan uh, rolls him up, doesn't get all he wants on it. Does uh, We kind of see you know, the, the rapid-fire pinfall attempts. Uh, and eventually, Darren Young gets the victory here, which Daniel Bryan basically is portrayed as a guy who loses virtually everything during the time period. Hype for the upcoming um, continuation of matches. Hype for also some um, outside stuff and outside projects here. And uh, Daniel Tarver makes his way out to the ring. Tarver, a guy who has a lot of athletic ability, doesn't have a great deal of uh, uh, run around. Um, we see hype from... Uh, Justin Gabriel, who's from South Africa, he comes in, looks pretty good. I mean, the match itself is is pretty basic. It's amazing to me that I can go back 20 years ago and watch independent stuff and, and see more talent in, in guys and ladies who were there than, than see in guys that were in WWE 10 years ago. So it's just an interesting run that, um, and, and to be fair, the flippy floppy style, that that I complain about now still was there uh, years ago, but less. Anyway, Tarver and uh, uh, Justin Gabriel are here. Gabriel has a lot more po polish with the look that he has, but he'd also been wrestling for, I don't know, a, a bunch of years in, in uh, South Africa and around the world, which they did not highlight here. Abdominal stretch actually hooked on pretty well by Tarver. Tarver... He uses his power advantage as is to be expected. Hammer fists and such by uh, Gabriel. Gabriel gets the man over and pretty well blows uh, up pretty aggressively here. Cl uh, clothesline and fo running forearm in the corner. And a um, crossbody off the top or over the top rope and... Um, back in and uh, the crossbody doesn't get him the pin which d he actually doesn't even go for the pin kind of goofy crouching on the top rope by tarver tarver who um uh, manages to get shrugged off of the of the ropes and a couple of hard shots by uh um tarver and then we see a kick and the 450 splash win from gabriel then we go to the a uh, promise that was earlier in the program, wherein uh, the winner faced the WWE superstar. David Otunga complains about being an A-lister, but not being given A-list opportunities here. Uh, and then we go to Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett is 2-1. and one. Of course, his pro Chris Jericho is uh, very supportive of him at the time. Barrett, of course, doing commentary now. I actually enjoyed Wade Barrett a lot more going back and watching him. What's also interesting to me is how far the WWE has fallen in the last five or six years. I can go back to 2010, 2011 at a time I didn't think things were that great and really look and go, at least they were doing something with some semblance of faces and heels. Anyway, Otunga gets headbutted and uh, a little bit clunky from Otunga, not really doing as much selling as he could, jumping in, uh, leg strike and knee strike from uh, Wade Barrett, Barrett with uh, some shots way down and uh, ultimately uh, trying to stay on the man and a kick from Barrett. Barrett uh, is dominant throughout the match here, which is good in one way, but Otonga ends up going to or had been uh, a focal point on Raw in the weeks to come and, and it's just kind of odd to see uh, them kind of, I don't want to say throw him away, but they kind of do here. Back elbow by um, Otunga, and Otunga does get some offense in. Like I said, this point in the um, the NXT run, they're still using a good bit of wrestling there. The uh, forward throw and the win for Wade Barrett as we close that particular segment. Kane and Heath Slater. Heath Slater's a pro Christian. Heath Slater is uh, four and one in matches thus far. Uh, 
which I don't know why they're doing the records thing. Odd that Tony Khan and AEW would do it years later. Uh, obviously, as one would expect, Kane is brawling down on Slater. I don't know if this was actually a chance to get the independent or the um, NXT talent an opportunity to get in there with the main roster stars or if it was just for the TV sake. I don't really know what the deal of the program was at the time. Of course, 11 years ago, not going to remember too well. Anyway, drop kick by Slater from the top rope. Looks pretty good. Obviously, knocking Kane off his feet, not going to happen very well. Uh, cross body by Slater, and Slater, again, gets uh, a little roughed up more than he'd like, but manages to get things going in his general direction. Big kick, though, cut off by Kane. Kane... Uh, takes the man to the outside and brawls with, with him a bit and hangs on to a, uh, a, um, um, chin lock and then pitches him to the outside. Attempted sunset flip by Heath Slater. Slater, uh, manages to, uh, stay on task for a minute or two more, but a cross body or a, uh, side suplex by Kane. Kane with the sliding drop kick as well right into the face. Of his adversary, Kane goes to the top rope and uh, dunks his opponent upside down. And then Kane waiting for the uh, choke slam like maneuver and getting uh, where he wants to right under the chin with that. And finally manages to hit the choke slam, get the win. And Kane wins, obviously, as is to be expected. Good match for Heath Slater at the time in this point in his career. And I think. Uh, even the crowd reacts kind of like, hey, he's a rookie who didn't uh, belong in there with Kane, but did better than expected. That will close us out for this particular episode. We'll be back with more right after this.